This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Hey guys, it's Max. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. This has the best CPU and the best graphics, comparing it to the previous top spec 15.4 inch MacBook Pro in regards to video editing with Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Final Cut Pro, and looking at a wide variety of codecs. Now, this new MacBook Pro has new AMD 7 nanometer graphics that are not only more energy efficient and put out less heat, but they're more powerful as well. Now, the CPUs should run faster because Apple upgraded the cooling. Uh, and when we look at the performance, starting off with Geekbench 5, yes, we do have some improvements, but it's not massive. And then if we take a look at pushing all the cores to the max with Cinebench R20, once again, we do see some improvement, uh, but it's not very big. You won't really notice that difference other than maybe just a few different tests. Now, I'm most excited for the new graphics card. Not only is it more powerful, as you guys can see in this metal test in Geekbench 5, uh, uh, but it also has double the video memory if you get the best graphics card. And for some cases like Blender, if you're gonna be rendering with the graphics card, that we saw a massive difference because the four gigs of memory was really limiting the Vega 20. Not only that, but this graphics card is a lot less expensive than the Vega 20. The Vega 20 was a $450 upgrade from the base graphics, where this one is a $200 upgrade. And you can now get it with the six core processor instead of being forced to get the eight core processor. Let's start out taking a look at Bruce X. Here we see a substantial improvement of graphics power. Uh, now this test just uses the graphics to render a bunch of animations and effects, and we're seeing some huge huge improvements, and I think a lot of this is because of that extra video memory. And in fact, this test actually beat out the iMac Pro. Now, I do have a video coming out on that, so make sure you guys are subscribed. This gave me a lot of hope when I first started out doing the tests. Uh, then I jumped in to check out the Blackmagic RAW playback test, and uh, this new graphics card actually performed exactly the same, being able to play back 8K RAW at 55 frames per second, just like the Vega 20. And and then the actual CPUs, I expected about the same performance based on other benchmarks, but for some reason, this CPU does play back Blackmagic RAW better, or at least decode it better. Now let's get into stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip. I love super smooth shots, so I use this quite a bit. And in all of the tests, the results are basically the same between the two machines. Of course, Premiere takes much longer because uh, Warp Stabilizer still is not using the graphics. Before we move on, let me tell you about a super helpful video editing tool, our sponsor, Storyblocks. Have you ever been working on a video project and you're just missing that extra B-roll clip, whether it's a drone shot, time-lapse, or something else to top off your videos? Well, Storyblocks has over 325,000 HD and 4K video clips to help you out along with After Effects templates and motion backgrounds. And you can download as many as your heart desires. New clips are regularly added, and they're all royalty-free, so you can use them for both personal and commercial projects. Go to storyblocks.com slash max to learn more, and the next time you're in a bind or just editing and you feel like your project can use that little extra something, you'll have access to a huge stock library at a fraction of the cost. Take your video to the next level with Storyblocks. Now let's get into actual video editing, and before I go into the numbers, I wanna say that all three of these programs were just updated. Final Cut now uses a new metal-based engine, so the graphics card is doing a lot more of the work. DaVinci Resolve has gotten faster. Uh, and same thing with Premiere Pro. We have the new 2020 version, which as you guys will see, is very close now in some of these tests. Now looking at the actual results here, um, we're not getting really much faster speeds with the new MacBook Pro at all. Uh, that was very interesting to me. And um, once I started looking at uh, the actual GPU usage and the video usage and what is happening when we're rendering and playing back, Final Cut DaVinci Resolve playback perfectly. Premiere Pro has gotten a lot better. Now in the timeline, if we're playing it back at full resolution, the old MacBook Pro can't actually play at 30 FPS. It plays at about 24, 25 once we get into it. Whereas the new one does play back at 30, uh, but it is just right there. So pretty much I'll max out on the graphics. So yes, the new MacBook Pro is faster, but that's if you're playing back at full resolution, which you only really need to do if you're hooked up to an external monitor with your different, uh, your um, view set up that way. Uh, on a laptop, you might as well set it to half, and in that case, they play back exactly the same. So here, even though we have better graphics, we're in the land of diminishing returns, really. The CPUs are more than fast enough, and here, they're not even being utilized to half because graphics is utilized much more. Now, one thing that I noticed is the new MacBook 
MacBook Pro is actually louder in terms of fan noise. It is about one decibel louder. The actual sound is a lower tone, but it still is more annoying to me personally. That's if you're only pushing the machine to its limits, like when you're rendering or working with some really crazy stuff. Uh, if you're working with some regular files in Final Cut, it actually is a little bit quieter because it doesn't put out as much heat doing the same tasks. Uh, but if you do a lot of rendering or transcoding, be aware that you might get a louder experience with the new MacBook Pro. Now, one thing that I talked about after the 16-inch Mac Pro was announced is that the new graphics cards have an updated encoding engine, which allows you to encode HDR, HEVC footage at up to 4K 90 frames per second in 10-bit. If you guys have followed along, this has been the main huge pain point for video editors that want to upload HDR footage. A five-minute timeline takes forever, as you guys can see by these charts. We realistically should be able to render this five-minute project in about maybe two minutes or so. so so once these programs start utilizing the new graphics and that encoder, instead of using just the CPU, uh, we're gonna have a huge improvement because the Vega 20 will not be able to do that. And in that case, you HDR editors are gonna be so happy working with this new graphics card. Now let's take a look at raw footage from the Canon C200 and soon the C500 Mark II. And this is the first time where I see a pretty dramatic improvement in Final Cut. Keep in mind, this is a five minute project if you're working in longer projects. Uh, uh, we'll see a better improvement. Now, as far as the actual playback, uh, Final Cut has had a pretty big improvement since the last update. So now uh, it actually plays back at about 50 frames per second, between 50 and 60. DaVinci Resolve, you can play back this footage at full resolution at 30 frames per second. And in Premiere Pro, like always, they're using more of the CPU. And it only plays back at 11 frames per second. And then if you go down to half, you could play back at 34 with the old Macro Pro and uh, 40 with the new Macro Pro with the better graphics. And taking a look at raw footage from the red, uh, here we actually don't see much difference either. Um, yes, in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, it's slightly faster. Uh, in Final Cut, it's actually slightly slower slower, I really don't know why. But as far as comparing these two machines, we're not seeing that much of a difference. Uh, it could be because of drivers, but I don't think they're gonna be able to make that much room to see a dramatic result here. So overall, I was slightly disappointed. I was hoping we'd see a bigger difference, um, I kind of thought that with regular 4K footage and H.265, it's going to be similar uh, because, you know, they really don't have issues with it at all. Uh, but even in the heavier stuff, it seemed like we didn't get that much of a performance difference uh, with the, the new graphics and the update, updated cooling here. Now, on the flip side, if you have a MacBook Pro without the expensive Vega 20 graphics, meaning you might have a 6 core with a 555X or 560X, we are going to see a massive improvement with a MacBook Pro that has a six core. And even if you get the base graphics, they are almost as good as these 5500M graphics. Um, so for those of you guys that had a cheaper Mac and now you wanna upgrade, you're gonna save money on the new one and uh, the performance is gonna be drastically better. So if you held off and you didn't buy one, um, now is a really great time to buy. And I also ordered in a 2015 MacBook Pro. I know some of you guys stuck with that because you know you guys like the ports that are in there, it did the job, you didn't like the new ones, and then they had keyboard issues and stuff like that. Um, so a lot of you guys are thinking about now finally updating. So I'm gonna be doing a video where I'm gonna compare the difference between not just you know six months difference in time where we're not seeing that much gain, but how much of a difference do we see over you know four years and then maybe I'll throw in a base model in there too so you guys can see what performance you get if you spend a lot less money. Thank you guys for watching this has been Max and I'll see you guys in the next video.